Hello? Great, great, great. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you very, very much to our all-female band. You know, girls rock indeed. Thank you so much. Give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to the UNFPA Ghana Youth Leaders Fellowship Cohort 2 send-off and the launch of the Yule Alumni Network. Can I have a round of applause? It's been, I can't believe it's been three years already since the fellowship started. We have cohort one, we have cohort two, we have cohort three. It's awesome. It's been such an amazing experience for the country office and I know for the young people who have come through the office and we will be seeing a little bit of that as we go um, throughout this evening. And once again, also, I want to say thank you to the staff, to cohort one, to members of family, to some of our census monitors who are here. Thank you so much for being a part of this very exciting evening. So once again, you are very welcome to this event. And um, like I said, we are not going to spend the whole day because I know I can see people want to dance. So we are not going to spend too much time on our speeches, etc., so that you can have some more time to socialize. We are going to go straight to the program, and we have um, a spoken word. You see, our cohorts, there are so many different talents that are imbued in that group. So we are going to have a spoken word, something that is going to inspire us. And we are going, it's going to be delivered by Mrs. Ivana Amponsa. Give her a round of applause as she comes forward. Oh, you can do better than that. Thank you very much, and good evening, everyone. From diverse countries of Africa, cities, fields, and industry, we came. Responding to the call for impact, for sustainable change. From many wells of knowledge and experience, we shared and drew from. Growing together, making mistakes, rising above the odds, learning from one another. From dawn to dusk, we worked, clothed in our fiery garments of burnt orange and coats of navy blue, bringing joy and hope be broken and searching hearts and minds. From coding to treasure hunting and hackathons and to long hours of training, ensuring that we came out not just better, but the best. From early morning outreaches to mid-morning program meetings and even evening rehearsals, even in the middle of a global crisis, making heroes and sheroes of us, exposing us not just to growth, but also to a system that works, and most importantly, giving us a seat at the table of progress. In the beginning, we declared that we will be better, and now we are. That translates into the many successes we have chalked. UNFPA, we are grateful for this environment you have given us. Together we say, and on behalf of my entire team, we want to say, Yadase, Nagude, Akpe, Wondaboshi, Merci beaucoup, Muchas gracias, Grazie mille, thank you. That was awesome. That was awesome. In fact, that summarizes the whole cohort yellow fellowship experience. I like the way she said the, the burnt orange uh, uh, jerseys, which we all know very well. And, and the blue coats. Yes. In fact, cohort two was a, a very interesting group because you came in the middle of a crisis. But despite that, you left your mark. Well done, and thank you very much for that.
So now that Ivana has given us a bit, um, taking us down memory lane, can we ask the band to give us just some one song so that we can use it to move to the next level? Smile, my 
settle down, we want to begin to understand the fellowship a little better, especially for those who are new amongst us. Just go back down memory lane and see what the fellowship is all about. I will take the opportunity to invite Michael Ige, who is the manager of the Youth Fellowship Program. With a round of applause. Oh, you've taken the round of applause out of... Hey! <laughs> Michael is going to do a presentation for us on the Youth Fellowship Program. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's great to have you here this evening and the celebration of young people. And this is also reaffirm our commitments as in UNFPA that we are so much interested in the development of the youth. This evening, I'm going to take you through a very brief journey on how far we've gone, how far we've come, all this, um, the, within these two years. And you can see here, these this beautiful, brilliant minds who have been celebrated today because they've been through the process. Someone told me that before a process is, before a performance, there's always a process. So it's more like a more of inc an incubation where young people come through. Can I have the next slide? So our country rep is saying, if you look at the last part of that, he said, UNFPA Ghana, in the bid to ensure that the potentials of young persons is fulfilled. He said, all pregnancies are wanted, all childbirth is safe, and the potentials of that child, we are interested in the development of that child, is being fulfilled. Now, the key word there is potential. And this has fed well for the past couple of years, the next slide, in terms of ensuring uh, the young people are being carried along they are being taking the lead in every areas, especially in youth and development. Now, if you look at this, is not in isolation. This is also in line with the UN Youth Strategy, uh, United Nations Secretary General's strategy on youth, that's Youth 2030. It's also in line with the Ghana National Youth Policy. It's also in line with UNFPA Ghana strategy on youth and adolescent 2013. So to let you know that this is... This is to make them ambassador, of course, of ICPD as well. This is the background. To make young people hone their skills in leadership and development. So beyond that, you can see here, addressing SDG Go 8, besides that, of course, UNFPA is currently addressing SDG 3 and SDG 5. SDG Go 8, what does it say? It says that youth economic empowerment and decent job. So looking at the old looking at the old narrative around jobs, looking at the old narratives around youth unemployment, looking at the old narrative around young people concerning meaningful engagement. So we are looking at an idea, a platform and a system that incorporates young people into that incorporates young people. No, I can't even do it without this. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. That incorporates young people into the system. And of course, looking at the, 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 the level of youth employment in Ghana, the World Bank states that it's 
against the underemployment that is 50 percent, the largest you can see in the subregion. So this entire program is, when, is an incubation. It's a incubation room that when young people are brought in green, they are, they are able to move from the unknown to the known. Next slide. So, ladies and gentlemen, this evening I'm presenting to you this Brilliant Minds, the second cohort of Youth Leaders Fellowship Program. These are their beautiful faces I can see. They come in green. <laughs> they've fed well over the past years. They've learned over time. They've been cooperating with the system. The next slide. So I'm going to just quickly briefly talk about the key, five key components of the fellowship. And one of the key components of the fellowship is the engagement with the units. So at the point, the, one of the key components is that they, at the point they have been deployed to different units in UNFA to learn the mandate area, the programming area, to able to incorporate them to understand what maternal health is, what family planning is, and what sexual and reproductive health is. So you can see our brilliant, uh, our excellent, ex our experts in, in UNFPA. Now look at, this is another component. So the cohort two had over almost 400 accumulated hours of learning from CV writing to public speaking to human center design, everything addressing the future of work, everything addressing SDG 8. So UNFPA is not just meeting SDG 3 and 5, we are also concerned about SDG 8. They are able to learn for over time and these are the essential tools that is being used in the future of work 21st century job the next slide so these are what the topics the sessions they undertake in terms of commercial awareness innovative project management leadership style transformational leadership diplomacy and public policy engagement these are the courses they go through through these rigorous hours, accumulated hours of learning to ensure they are able to fit into the system. Capacity building, proposal, writing, concept, notes, and these are the, uh, the once they acquire this knowledge, they are able to use it in the fellowship, they are able to use it even outside at the point, they are able to use it in the unit because you are talking about potential, so first thing about potential is they are able to first understand and discover their potentials before their potential is being maximized and unleashed. Please, the next slide. The, another model talks about their external training. So they are privileged to attend international conferences and this whole idea is to make them broaden their horizon when it comes to conferences. And this is also to give them an idea in terms of networking, in terms of global issues, how to address global issues as well. So you can see here and in last year, before COVID came, the, uh, some of them were, went to Nigeria, well, went to Nigeria for a training program on Adobe Masterclass. Then I already talked about unit engagement. So they are all deployed to different units according to their interest and uh, their passion. They are deployed to the units and they are able to learn about what happens in those units, population and development, the RH units, the maternal health units. And we have experienced staff with well, with wealth of experience to take them through the process. Now, another component of the fellowship is the online engagement. Of course, with the advent of COVID, with the emergence of COVID, we had to switch to digitization. We moved from analog to digitization, right? So they are able to organize conferences online to engage the public, and they are able to not just, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, they come in, from the conceptual stage to the, to the execution of some of these projects and these uh, programs, they are able to moderate. We, are, we allow them because the UN strategy says for the youth, working for the youth with the youth. So we are able to give them this platform and this gives them a lot of exposure on the program. Another online engagement, I think, the next slide. Okay, so this is a, uh, another engagement they have with highly high professionals in different from different fields because of course like I said we want them to have different ideas from the director of Ghana Health Service to Lisa Quiz to Amel Dabra they organize these programs and these programs they are able in this through this program they are able to leverage on the expertise of this um, distinguished guest as well so next slide so another component of the fellowship talks about community engagement. So during the COVID, 
they are able to come up with, with interesting concept notes to address issues of SGGV in the community. So they, they embark on this community project, of course, with the support of the country office as well. So this narrative would not um, be complete unless I share the success stories because a lot of questions have been unanswered in the minds of many in terms of, okay, so what happens after the, all the trainings, all the exposure, all the networking, what happens? And I'm pleased, I'm super excited to share with you some of the success stories. So as you can see here, through this training, Jennifer now works with UN Hayes. We are super excited about this through this program. Ekoteshi Mensas works as a communication assistant to SA. <laughs> and also Angela Botele, through this project, I've been able to get a placement with International Organization for Migration in Ghana. The next slide. Also, I'm pleased to present to you that Lydia Asian is doing a master's full scholarship in UK through this project. Julius Mochi as well is also working with SAA as a visual and social media assistant. Sheriff Odu, through this project, has been able to secure a scholarship as well to study a master's in human rights, gender, and conflict resolution in Netherlands. And she's actually with us here. She came all the way from Netherlands. <laughs> Erika Yama is also providing administrative support to UNFPA Ghana. George Kurantima, at present, is also engaged as a freelance photographer at also photo journal journaling the lives of every Ghanaians. And also Fanaya Nyaze, communication and knowledge management consultant with Pro League Crossroad International Canada. Now we have Essinam as well. Also, she assists with the Orange Support Center, and she's also pursuing her master's in, in KIPTC. Francis Okwama also is providing administrative assistance to the Orange Support Center. Both Bonke Ima Igo is also providing assistance, administrative assistance to the Orange Support Center. Seraphim Akubasha is also Deputy Professional Development Director for Rotarat Ghana, and she's also supporting the UNFPA Ghana on Global Program to End the Child Marriage. Kobina Makin is also a field officer, Nigo Pram Pram District, supporting the population and housing census. Ivan Amposa is also the Business Development Executive of Heart Group, and also a team member of the Parents Support Working Group, a project by AIC. Rachel Vida is also supporting UNFPA Ghana as an independent observer at the census, and also she's been selected as a Yali, a Yali youth leader. Now, Ayon Matthew is also supporting the Population Development Unit of UNFPA as an advice assistant for the consultants of uh, consultant statistician. <laughs> wow, interesting. <laughs> Pataya is also supporting the Adolescent Sexual and Reproductive Health Unit at UNFPA. And she was selected as a 2001 NASA fellow. And yes, we have the Lela Tani. She's also a volunteer administrative officer for Climate Science Africa. She's also interning with Gold Business and Editing Solutions Ghana. Now, Imana is also an independent observer at the census. And Sarah Giron currently is also undertaking a master's in business administration in Canada. We are glad to present to you all this and it's just to reaffirm UNFPA's commitment to youth development and to let you know that we don't just we are not we are not just allowing them to come in into the fellowship but we are interested in their progress as they move on in life lastly there's something I want to show you can you show the video and that sums up the entire activity of the fellowship can we have the video this is a good place to clap this is a good place to clap
So on this note, I'd like to welcome AC and Iwa to come and speak to us on behalf of Cohort 2. Thank you. Please give her a better round of applause. Applause, please. Thank you very much. So this is from the Yoli Kuhotu. The orange loft, our fertile garden. Like beautiful flowers in a garden, we were watered with priceless opportunities, trainings, and exposure. We were pruned with constructive criticism from our supervisors, from the Office of the Country Representative, Reproductive Health, Population and Development, Communication, Adolescent Sexual and Reproductive Health, Gender, Operations, Units, as well as the Yoli Secretariat. As we are being plucked out of the garden, our colorful petals are indicative of our readiness to orange the world. On 6 January 2020, young people brimming with potential from different institutions, nationalities, and backgrounds were integrated into the UNFPA Ghana country office to be prepared into becoming worthy ambassadors of the ICPD agenda, which primarily aims at safeguarding sexual and reproductive health and rights for all people without discrimination. The fellowship moves swiftly into equipping us with scientifically proven sexual and reproductive health information, knowledge for professional development, as well as skills in innovation. These include coding, photography, graphic design, video editing, human-centered design, among other relevant proficiencies needed for us to thrive in this digital age. Undeniably, these skills have set us apart from our contemporaries and will continue to play a great role in the next phase of our lives. After being outdoor to the world in February, we were convinced we were in for a jolly ride, but as fate would have it, we were uniquely challenged with the COVID-19 pandemic. 
for a moment. This seemed to be a setback. But little did we know that it was going to test the actual resilience of the second cohort of Yoli Fellows. Through the support of management, we still continue to implement our scheduled activities by virtual means and in adherence to the COVID-19 protocols. Allow me to inform you that despite the odds, we were able to conduct more than 15 community outreaches, produce more than 30 Orange Vibes weekly news bulletins, engage in more than seven Twitter chats in commemoration of international days, supported in the organization of more than 10 webinars. In essence, we launched into our communities, contributing our quota to achieving zero maternal mortality, zero unmet need for family planning, and zero incidences of sexual and gender-based violence cladded in our UNFPA jerseys. As a matter of fact, orange became our lifestyle, and we carried others along. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2020-2021 Youth Leaders Fellows can only be grateful for the great opportunities the fellowship offered. From providing media support during the working visit of the Deputy UN Secretary General, Her Excellency Amina J. Mohammed's visit to Ghana, the launch of UN at 75, speaking engagement at the African Youth SDG Summit, moderating high-level meetings and events, supporting in planning and coordination of UN, UN Commemorative Day, such as the International Day of the Midwife, International Youth Day, World Population Day, World Contraception Day, 16 Days of Activism Against Sexual and Gender-Based Violence, the launch of State of World Population Reports, among other significant events. We are glad that UNFPA Ghana Country Office we are glad that the gains UNFPA Ghana Country Office reaped from their investment in young people. Without a doubt, that is how to reap the demographic dividend. Congratulations, Yoli Cohort 2. We, we can confidently say, Veni Vidi Vici. We came, we saw, and we conquered. On this August occasion, we, the COVID-19 heroes, doff our hats to the staff of UNFPA Ghana under the leadership of Mr. Ni Ojolakwe, our esteemed, our esteemed country representative for leading the team into walking the talk in ensuring that every young person's potential is fulfilled. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Esi Aniwa. Cohort 2 was also the group that spearheaded the five what? Yes, the five orange vibes, which, as we say in Ghana parlance, caught a lot of fans. And when we say caught a lot of fans, it means that it became very popular amongst not only the UN, but even outside the UN. So Cohort 2, we thank you very much for your innovation and your creativity. We will move on to our next item, which is to recognize the good work that Cohort 2 did and present to them a symbolic gesture or do a symbolic gesture, present to them a certificate indicating that they have been part of Cohort 2 Fellowship for the UNFPA Fellowship Program, and that indeed they have excelled in what they have done. So I wish we could have, okay, the musicians are not really behind. Can you give us a quick one? Thank you. Give us a quick one while we get ready to hand over our certificates. Our Deputy Rep, Dr. Agnes, Kaita and Corey will be helping us hand over the certificates. So while we just get ready for that, let's have a, a little bit of music.
Pense, pense, pense. Ah, Sampa Tama Putu. Sampa Tama Poto. Sampa Tama Putu. Putu, Putu. Pray, 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 pray. Ego Benta. Pray, 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 pray. Ego Benta. Salemon, 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 Salemon. Ego Benta. Salemon, 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 Salemon. Ego Benta. Ego Benta. Ego Benta. Putu, Thank you. Thank you so very much. Eh? You know some of these songs, all we can hear is the pray, 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 pray. All the rest, we just put our mouth inside, right? <laughs> As we say, we just put our mouth inside. So thank you so much. We have come to that stage of the program where we are going to award the certificates to cohort two. Our deputy rep, Dr. Agnes Paitan Kore, is going to do us the honors. And um, I think this is supposed to come down a little bit more, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I will be mentioning the name of... I'm going to mention the name of the fellows. And please... Give them a round of applause as they come forward to receive their certificates. Are we ready to go with the first person? Okay, so the very first person on our list here is Kobna Markin. Kobna, come forward. Please, you can do better. Right now, it's clapping time, so please. It's time to clap, Victoria. It's time to clap. Thank you so much, Kobna. Well done and congratulations. Okay, you may have your seat for now. Thank you very much. Just a little clarification there. Next person on the list is Ivana Amponsa. Congratulations, Ivana. Well done, all of you. Thank you so much. You may have your seat. Next person up, <laughs> Estinam Amuzu. <laughs> so that's our new COVID handshake. Eh? So. Thank you so much, Esinam, and congratulations once again. The next person up, Erika Ehiyama. <laughs> well done, Erika, of the OTR. Thank you so much. Well done, and congratulations. The next person is Lydia Eshen. Who is speaking on behalf of Lydia? Uh, okay. Thank you so much, Irene. <laughs> Irene, thank you. Irene, Lydia is far away, so um, Irene is speaking on her behalf. I hope she, Lydia is watching it live. Next one is Sarah Jirion. It's, okay. Oh, great, great. We have a representative from Sarah's family who's picking up her, her certificate. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Sarah, if you are watching. Well done. The next person coming up is our five orange vibes. <laughs> Jennifer Eniwa. Congratulations and well done. Congratulations. Following that, Julius Mochi. 
Congratulations, Julius. <laughs> and well done. Thank you so much. Of course, since we are in that department, George Granting is next. <laughs> Thank you so much, George. After that, we have Delali Tanu. Oh, Delali, congratulations on a job very well done. Congratulations. Sharifa Awudu. <laughs> Sharifa Awudu is next. Well done, Sharifa. Congratulations. Up next, we have Rahel, Rachel, Rahel, Rachel, you see? Rachel, 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 obedient. You see, we all know it as Rachel or Rahel, but here we have Rachel. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rachel. Job well done. Next up is Eze. Eze Emmanuel. Congratulations on a job very well done. Bomke, you are up next. Bomke Ima Igoi is up next. Give her a round of applause. Congratulations, Bomke. Well done. The next person coming up for a certificate is Oko Ama. Well done, Oko. Congratulations on a job very well done. For the next person, Fataya Sumaila. <laughs> Congratulations, Fataya, on a job well done. Congratulations. Echo Tetimensa. <laughs> Congratulations, Echo. Very well done. <laughs> Miss Bache. Seraphin. Uh -huh. Yeah. Congratulations, Fanael, on a job very well done. Congratulations. Ayodele Matthew. Yeah. Zip 101. Ayodele Matthew, uh -huh. well done and congratulations yeah. on a job uh -huh. very well done. My nigga, congratulations you once again. And the last, but not the least, Angela, Angela Forte. Angela is not here with us today. Irene will receive it on her behalf. If you are watching us out there, Angela, congratulations and a job well done. Can you please raise, thank you so much, Dr. Kayi Kantoro, you may take your seat. Yes, thank you very much. Can we raise this? And I want all the cohort members to please come on the stage. With your certificates, please. <laughs> Thank you. 
Everybody, everybody has to be on the stage. The tall ones, please go behind. Everybody, please stand up on the stage for me. Ladies and gentlemen, cohort two. Cohort two for you. Well done. Congratulations. You have excelled. Well done. Sing for you like a rain. Give you loving book or be. Oh, baby. Well done. Cohort 2, you have been amazing. Well done. Well done. Please be careful so you don't. If you touch my baby, then it's a murder. Oh, yeah. If you put your body on me, I put my money on you. I put the dollar on you, girl. If you put your body on me, then I put my money on you. I put my dollar on you, girl. Oh, girl, you're looking so amazing. For you, I think I'm Thank you, Mr. Way. DJ. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, that has been cohort two of the UNFPA Ghana Youth Fellowship Program amazing group of young people coming from all kinds of backgrounds and they have really achieved a year of experience it has been a year where despite COVID they have done so much we wish them all the best even as doors continue to open for them and that wherever they go they will find themselves standing out because of the experience they gained through the fellowship cohort two Thank you, and well done. So you know we are here for two purposes. We are here to see cohort two off, which we have, but we are also here to launch the alumni network of the Yoli Fellowship, because by year three, we are going to have about what, 60 or so, 60 plus young people who can learn from each other and benefit from each other. So we want to launch the Yole Alumni Network. We were trying to do a presentation for you. Is that going to happen? Okay, great. So the cohort one, cohort one, are you here? Give me a wave. Woo! Oh, I'm so happy to see you guys. Well done, and thanks so much for coming. That's cohort one. Another amazing. You know they are they were our pace setters, and they set the pace. So cohort two had to follow, and they followed excellently. You did an amazing job, cohort one. <laughs> so we want to launch the alumni network, and we've had them coming together, working together, seeing how best they can make this network this network. Um, become a strong one that will benefit the group. We are going to have a presentation. Is it Kobna who's going to do the presentation for us? Yes, Kobna. So Kobna Markin is going to give us an introduction to the Yole Alumni Network. Thank you.
so uh, um, once again, good evening, everyone. And um, as we are exiting as the second cohort, we were thinking about possible ways of keeping everybody together and pushing the agenda of UNFPA further and further higher. So the ultimate goal of the alumni network is to help create a long last, is to help create a group of long lasting brand ambassadors who will ensure that in whichever spheres of work they find themselves, um, they keep propagating the good work that UNFPA is doing. And to that effect, we, we started by creating three working groups. We had the admin working group, the planning working group, and the communications and work working group. And for a start, we managed to get all alumni on board in terms of voluntarily choosing a group in which they feel they can work to support this course. So on this August occasion where we're about launching the network, I just want to remind all alumni of what an American president once said, that instead of thinking about what you can get from your society, think of what you can do. And my final words will be that let us never forget our humble beginnings and hence do what is needful so far as ensuring the sustenance of the fellowship. At this point in time, may I humbly request that all members of the first two, hold, first two cohorts please come forward. Please, you can give a round of applause as they majestically move forward. So, just to give a little background before the eventual launch. So as at now, um, we've come as far as having put together um, some standard operating procedures and plans of actions to far as our various working groups are concerned. And we want to believe that after the launch of the network, we would continue to work and work even harder so far as advancing um, the fellowship is concerned and also the various aspirations of all alumni. So at this point in time, okay, so at this point in time, I would call upon the biggest brain behind the Youth Leaders Fellowship program to speak a few words before the eventual launch of the network. Shall we please welcome our one and only country rep, Mr. Nii Ojolape. Please, the, the applause are low. That's our one and only country rep. Okay. What shall we say? Can we have the lights on so that they can have a picture at least? So, because this is that you, you have a presentation, isn't it? You still have a presentation? Okay, so let's have the lights on, please. With the lights, please. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> can I suggest that you should, you should take your pride of place very, very proudly and prominently because there will come a time that this place will not be enough to take all the alumni someday. <laughs> so you should value this moment. Are we taking pictures? So we should value this moment. Yeah, Mr. Nana Blank saying, please come this way. A 
Farida. Ha. Look at the two of them strutting. There will be something to this. <laughs> Ordinarily, I will actually have a lot to say. Please move forward a bit. Move forward a bit. Are we ready? Because I actually have a lot to say, um, especially about the about the second court. Because they came in, I've said enough about the first quote and they know that they are my favorites. <laughs> they know that they are my favorites before the second quote came. <laughs> because the um, for those of us that are in the audience I just want you to we need to appreciate this set of people. Why? Because we brought them in as green ones. But they've grown to add a lot of value to us. And it's a good place to please clap for them. Let us just appreciate them. Yes, we've added a lot to them. But also, they, they have also been of very good value to the to the country office and I don't want us to uh, mince any words in appreciating them for the good work they've done. They've been very very um, good young people who have um, helped us tremendous, tremendously and I'm, I'm not going to take it for granted. Now let me talk specifically about the second court. They came in just two months before COVID hit. And with that, you would expect that um, everything will go moribund. But the enthusiasm and the energy that they put into what they needed to do still amazes me um, even up till now. And I can point to a few things. There are, a few, there are one or two things that we can point out to show the fact that the energy of, of young people is something that you cannot gauge and you cannot actually put um, a bridge to. Let me first acknowledge the staff of the country office. Thank you very much. But that is even not enough. Let us give them another round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Staff of the country office. For accommodating our young people, accepting them, mentoring them, working with them, and taking them through this journey of life up to the point whereby I can say that for each one of these young people, they become better people they become more experienced people. They become more informed, and they they are experts in their own in their own right on their own rights. But then they wouldn't have achieved that without the support and the mentorship that we provided from the matured people, from the matured staff that we have. And sincerely, I want to thank you all for this. I believe that you all get to heaven. When you get to heaven, ask God. God will tell you that I'm indeed sincere in thanking you very much for all that you have told, all that you have done for bringing up these ones. They've trained them, they've worked with them, they've cooperated with them, they've taken them 
um, under their wings. I can see all of those requisition, travel authorization, and all as it comes. I'm really, really very happy that, oh, yeah, yeah, these people are catching the dream. And I'm very, very proud of you. Wherever I go to after this time out, I will point to the, to the Ghana country office staff and say, these ones are ones in which we need, as a matter of fact, to achieve transformation in UNFPA and in the United Nations system in general. I want to thank you all very, very much for that. <laughs> now, talking about the second court, when they came in, you know, um, there's a lot of challenges, especially with COVID-19, which is global, which nobody who can just say, let everybody go. But a couple of things came out for which they helped. One is the door-to-door -door campaign. In the midst of COVID, that is actually what it means to hang in there and deliver. Nevertheless, it's like you have a set of people in an humanitarian situation or in the midst of war, and then they say, we have some services that we can provide. And they say, despite the guns that are blaring, we just go there and still deliver. And these ones, they did it very, very enthusiastically. And we owe a lot of thanks to the Almighty God that nobody caught COVID in, this, in the midst of all of that. Because that would indeed have been a game changer. But then the fact that everybody hung in there, they did all their bit, that door-to-door -door campaign, it's one of the things that we can actually reference today as one of the innovations and the achievements, the successes that we had in the midst of COVID. It wouldn't have happened except the young people are there. And um, that's our Yule fellows. They were the fulcrum of this happening. But let me take this opportunity also to recognize the one who led that process. You can please stand up, Madam Irene Dankwa. Hey, I'm, so, I'm very sorry. I'm very, very sorry. I actually meant Mrs. Irene Mensa. She led the door to door campaign, and with the door to door campaign, the figures that we get actually fits in into what we report in terms of um, um, AGP and um, what we say the outreach that we that we're able to achieve in the in, in the course of COVID 19. And it helps the country of his um, figures a lot. Then there is the Orange Support Center. The Orange Support Center is one thing that we can point to today. That is the platform, the basis upon which we can even resource mobilize. We are expecting a couple of millions of dollars as resource mobilization to help us to continue our work. But it is all based on the platform of the Orange Support Center. What we did in the midst of COVID-19, all the way to this point in time where we can say we put up a system I tell people that it is not just a center, it is actually a system. It's because we have a couple of very, very determined young people who helped us, who have helped the country office in so many ways to provide support for, um, for that which we do. Let Angela come. Angela, come, 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 whatever it is. The person coming behind you, is it the one who is to come? So please, the Orange Support Center people, please just lift up your hands. Let us clap for them. Because these are very outstanding issues which we must point out and um, give credit to them for, for, for this happening. And then, um, while talking about the fact that we want to launch a Youth Leaders Alumni Network, which brings the two together, the two courts together, and others will also join them in, in the course of time. Let me also allude to the work that the Yule Fellows, both Court 1 and 2, did with CASPRO, the KIA Assistance Project. <laughs> 
That is um, that is a melange of the two of the two cohorts and um, the testament for what has been done, what has been achieved with Castro is there. We can always refer to it anytime, and it's a source of pride to every one of us. And I think the, that is one other thing that we can put together. Then they also had this special humanitarian outreach to um, to Abiola Bewa Foundation for students for um, school children. That is also very, very commendable, and we're proud of you for making it happen. <laughs> then there is the visit of the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. It doesn't happen every day that the Deputy Secretary General visits country. And when she came here on a visit, we were very, very proud to have our Yoli Fellows being the ones that took care of everything that is media related on that trip. They didn't just do it. They did it with very, very loud applause from the resident coordinator and also the Deputy Secretary General himself. I'm going to be showing a picture of you with the Deputy Secretary General tomorrow. And we are very, very proud of you. Thank you very much for that which you have done. We have, I mean, there are so many more that we can point to. What do I say about um, Amakoko? Who is my very, very, very special support. I mean, every one of us, everybody, everybody, I mean, you have done very, 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 very well. I thank the entire team for the work that they have done, the communications team. I'll open up that, um, when I check my WhatsApp messages, I'll see that group. I can just see 124 messages there on that communications group. They've been discussing both night and day. In particular, this past night, I checked that platform, I could see that a couple of things were being done concerning the, the banner for this program. And I could see that they've, they'd actually gone very far. I made a suggestion, and within an hour or two, that is in the middle of the night. I did that, um, I made that suggestion, and maybe at about 3.20 a.m. thereabout, and within an hour or two, I got a response, and it was corrected, and I mean, that, I'm very, very impressed. No, we are coming to Auntie Doris later. Just wait. <laughs> and can I tell you, I'm not the type that gets impressed very easily. And so when I tell you I'm impressed, don't take it lightly. I'm, I can tell you that it's, um, it's really, really very impressive. So all of you, um, from number one to the end, I mean, all of you have done very, 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 very well. And, I can, and I'm very, very sure that the lessons that you are taking from this fellowship, it will go with you uh, in the journey of life to make your lives better. And we will we'll see you in the future at any point in time. In three years, five years down the line, we will always be proud to say, this, yes, these ones are actually, Auntie Adjo am I lying? And, <laughs> and Mike am I lying? Yes, we'll be, we'll be very, very proud of you guys. So, we thank you very, very much to, um, for, for all that you have done. And um, let me also say that the, um, the Youth Leaders Fellowship that we have, without any equivocation, is the only one of its kind in the whole world. I can actually tell you that given the global implications that we're talking about, not just in the UN system, but in any other system, that applause is not enough. <laughs> it's the only one of its kind in the whole world. And then when people get to hear about this, they are wondering, is it are you sure this is it? I was with the UNDP rep yesterday, and she was asking that, are you sure this is what is it? I just told her that. Uh, and I put on a little bit of swag in doing it to say, you know what, 
That's what we do. That's what we've been doing. And then if you want to do more, please come and meet us. We'll tell you how to make this, how, how, how to make this happen. And um, so the, to, to this point, um, I, I just want to say that um, most importantly, um, for coming this way to the point whereby we are graduating the second cohort, and tomorrow we'll be, we'll be bringing in the, the, the uh, we'll be inducting the third cohort, we only have thanks and praises to the Almighty God. And that brings me to the concept of Ebenezer. The concept of Ebenezer religiously is just to talk about um, one man that looked around and then erected what we call a stone of a stone somewhere that is in commemoration of um, how God has helped them. We couldn't have brought things this far, but for the fact that um, God helped us, and we must not uh, we must not um, take that um, take that lightly. Now, but at the same time, we want to acknowledge also the deputy representative for being. The ultimate cooperative. Hmm? The ultimate cooperative. She has helped us all the way to this point. We also want to acknowledge Auntie Ajoa for and we also, we also need to acknowledge Michael who has been leading the entire team. Then we must talk about the theory of change. <laughs> and therefore, we recognize Dr. Diffinell. <laughs> oh. It is at this juncture that I feel that it's a good place to clap in acknowledgement of uh, Auntie Doris. <laughs> There is no way that I'll be able to mention everybody's name and acknowledge their contribution to um, the success of the Yule Fellowship. But then, even if I don't mention your name, I want you to realize, I want you to understand that you have been very, very helpful. Every staff of the country office has helped. In the, in the Yule Secretariat, we have Michael... Aurelien and Irene, we thank you very much for for helping in every unit possible. In every unit possible. When we mentioned Dr. Ndifna, Dr. Ndifna would not have been able to do anything without De without Della and Vitus in supporting what we do. When we talk about the gender unit, we would not have been able to do anything except we also acknowledge what Faisal and um, and Selena and Abigail, what they do, and also that I'm putting aside the maternal health side of our office and then um, the exceptional support that is given by Dr. Selby Hollings. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and even though she's not here, we must recognize in absentia Dr. A.C. Awuchui for her support for the, for, for the Yule Fellowship. Apart from the work that she, that she does in, um, in, 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 in programming for, for the Yule Fellowship in so many ways, she also has taken off her time to provide training for them. So it takes a lot to bring up a curriculum, put things together, and actually provide the training in the recent of it. So we, we, we thank her for, 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 for her support in, in, in that regard. Madam Dela, I want to thank you. Also, under that, under that program, uh, Brian, as you, <laughs> as you continue your life, you knew once, you better go and know Brian. In order, in, order, in order to be able to make a success of what you are going to do. So we acknowledge Brian 
We acknowledge also um, the support of, um, where is Mr. Okra? Is, is, did Mr. Okra make it here at the end of the day? Okay, maybe he will, he will come in later. So under that team, Brian and Edith, I mean, they, they are doing a wonderful job. And they've helped us in, in, in so many ways. I want to say thank you very, very much to them. Now, very specially, there is no way you'll be getting your stipends if, if Mr. Goro has not been in support of you. <laughs> Where is Mr. Goro? Huh? There's no way you would have gotten your stipend if Mr. Goro has not been in, stop, in support of you. And if Auntie Mercy... <laughs> If Auntie Mercy did not support, then the finance side of the of the house, you must acknowledge um, Godwin and Auntie Noreen. <laughs> Godwin and Auntie Noreen, and by extension also Madam um, DG for making things for, for, for making things possible, and you can see. Um, we have here also to recognize uh, Martha and every one of them that has been involved in, in, in one way or the other. Is there anybody here that I have not seen in some way? Ah! <laughs> Cuckoo and Nana. Those ones are keep, I'm keeping them for, I'm keeping them specially. Okay, we recognize Kuku and Nana, and um, uh, we want you to understand that um, perhaps one of the sets of the most important people, even though they don't give them enough attribution, is our land pilots. Please let them rise so that we can just say hello to them. Chief, Chief Nash Sam, thank you. Thank you very much, and Moses, um, we, we, we thank you all very much. Um, let me finish, let me end this by, um, by thanking God also, particularly for safety of all our people in going and coming. And I use the term, I pronounce the term coming very advisedly. <laughs> In our going and coming, <clears throat> you know, in the last two weeks, we have had 12 teams traveling up and down all over the country. Everybody has gone and come back safely. We thank God for that. And I want to thank you for your, for your, for your support to me personally and for your cooperation for being good boys and girls. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And um, for those of you that are just coming in, maybe by this time next year, you'll be able to assume this pride of place. But for the time being, it is my pleasure, my singular honor, Oh, nah. <laughs> my, singular, my singular privilege, pleasure, and honor to inaugurate the Yole Alumni Network. Thank you. Lead me to my destiny I have waited patiently I have vision, though I believe I know I can count on me So stand up for the champions For the champions Stand up, stand up, stand up For the champions, for the champions Stand up for the champions
go. It's getting close. Thank you, champions. Thank you so much, champions. Because we have our strengths and weaknesses. Thank you very much. And on that note also, we now have a Youth Leaders Alumni Network. So we look forward also to getting some feedback from you to see how you are doing and what you plan to do. So congratulations again for all those who have sat together, put together the network and all that it looks forward to doing. Thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you that we will try our best to stay within time and we have done extremely well. We were supposed to close at 8.30. We have just about made it because we are on the last item on our agenda for now, officially on our agenda. You know, cohort two is a... You, every group comes with its specialty. Okay, so cohort two are the Jerusalem dancers. No? Okay, so small change of plans, very quickly, before the dancers come. Because we have seen cohort one and two, we are just going to take a few minutes, a few minutes and have a very quick, uh, if I should call it an interview, where we are going to have a member of cohort one, a member of cohort two, who will share very brief experiences in the fellowship with us before we go to the Jerusalem dances. So can we invite Oko Ama and Theodora Yabua? Oh, please, round of applause. The food is ready. Don't worry. Can we have... Okay, I think we can just use this mic. Is there an extra mic? There we have one, good. Okay, so um, maybe very quickly, just so that we can have a, you know, a, a feel of what is going on in the fellowship. Mm -hmm. So who's going to speak first? Theodora. You. Okay, so Theodora is just going to share with us some brief experiences from the fellowship. Theodora is from cohort one. Okay, so she's from cohort one. So Theo, over to you. Okay, good evening everyone. Um, it's a great honor to be here um, this evening to Hello. share this moment with you. Um, I'll just say a brief, um, <laughs> something brief about my experience in the fellowship. So um, it all began in, um, I guess, 2018. There was a call for application for um, this fellowship. I saw um, the the call for application, I read about it, and it, it called for people who wanted to be leaders, people who wanted to cause change in their communities. Mm -hmm. And I loved the whole idea. Even though at, at that time, I didn't know much about the work of UNFP, I took the time to read about what UNFPA does and everything. And um, I must say, I, I, I was more interested in the, the part that works with um, young people so I applied for it. I went through the whole process. It was a rigorous um, process, application process, but we went through it. And thankfully, I got into the fellowship. But one thing I would like to say is the, the fellowship provided an opportunity to learn. Throughout the whole period, throughout the whole one year period, it was always um, an opportunity, there was always an opportunity to learn in every aspect of our life. So, um, just a brief uh, on my um, challenging moments, my highs, my lows, and then I can round up, then my friend will also continue. So, so for the challenging moments, I mean, we, we got into the fellowship, there was this whole fun about the fellowship, but there was this aspect um, about the fellowship um, with regards to um, dealing or adapting to the whole new environment in the UN. I mean, it's a UN organization. There's, there's this whole um, diversity, there's this whole culture about 
the, working in the UN, but it was, it was a bit challenging um, during the initial stages, adapting to the working uh, culture or the organizational culture in the um, fellowship. But one thing, everybody in the, the office was very supportive. Everybody was willing to help in every aspect. You could actually just walk into anybody's office and everybody had an open arm. They were willing to support with whatever it is that you needed. And I, I must say it was actually a very good experience. Um, um, for my highs, it, it was, so we had the opportunity to organize outreaches, we had the opportunity to lead a lot of programs, and it was actually amazing. I mean, they actually delegated some um, responsibilities to us as young people to lead programs, to lead outreaches, and all of that. And I must say it was um, an interesting experience as well. But one thing I, I also quite remember was um, during the China-Africa conference, where we had the opportunity to meet the, the AD of um, UNFPA, yes, Dr. Natalie um, Kanem. She was around, she spoke to us, and it was, it was a privilege to meet her. I mean, I don't know where on earth I would have met her, if not, I mean, I mean if not the fact that I was part of the fellowship, but by virtue of the fact that I was part of the fellowship, I got to meet her and I mean, we interacted with her and all of that. Um, so just, just, just a little, yes, about my experience as well. So I would want Oko to also tell us, he had the, the opportunity to work with us whilst we were in the fellowship, but he wasn't yet in the fellowship. So I would want to find out from him what was his, um, I mean, his experience or what were the clues he took from the, the first cohort that um, pushed him to want to apply to be part of the the fellowship as well. Okay. Thank you, Todora. So, uh, my experience with the Yoli Fellowship actually started when I was not a Yoli Fellow. So, when um, I saw the launch, um, I saw updates on UNFPA Ghana's Facebook, and I have been working in the youth development space in Ghana for a while. So, I was very excited, even though I wasn't a Yoli Fellow, because it's like it was one of its kind for UNFPA to create this opportunity. And for every young person that I worked with, I always said it, even though I was not affiliated to UNFPA in that way. So I, my path crossed with um, cohort one, Abigail and Shika. We worked in the same office. And so when we, and that was the first time we were meeting, and they were shocked I was such a big fan of the program, even though I was not a Yoli fellow. And that is one of the things that I learned that even though I wasn't a Yoli fellow, I was even being impacted by the way I saw the fellows work together and all of that. So when, I, I mean, I was glued on the UNFPA Facebook page and Twitter pages because I know that updates keep coming. So when I saw the call, I thought, okay, this is the time. But it's not something easy you just go through and then you get selected. So when, the day of the interview, when I got shortlisted, I mean, when you see Julius in his suit, you run away. Like, when you see Julius in his suit for the interview, you ask yourself, what are you doing here? <laughs> you understand? But even at the time, that was, for some of us, that was the time we were also being intimate with the UNFPA staff. We were just in front of them during the interview asking questions. They asked us questions about our, our application, the organization, what we are coming to learn, and all of that. One of the things that, um, the questions that I, I, the interest was the community outreaches which I asked in my panel, and I was told during the interview that it's integrated in, throughout the fellowship program. And when I started, even though there was COVID, that was one of the biggest opportunities I had. Um, the door-to-door -door outreach that we worked on, there was a point in time we were doing three or four outreaches simultaneously, one in Teshi, one in Labadi, one in Jamestown, and one in Latebi Okoshi. That was when like I was put in a place to lead and you could see the strength of my colleagues. So every team, I have someone doing, uh, I have someone with a task and everything. And when everything came together, I saw that this correlates with the exact expectation that I had and the exact things that I was told during the interview that the outreaches are throughout 
it's been woven throughout your entire year at UNFPA, and it was one of the biggest impacts on my life. So yes, um, it's been quite a journey, and one of my lows were that I, there are things I want to do, a lot of things I want to do, but I get in my own head and I fear, but then my colleagues are there because UNFPA, it puts you in a team. You are always not alone. You are working with someone. So your colleagues are always there to share with. I go to any, I can go to anyone, call anyone at any time, and they are just there, oh, you can do it, just do it. And then we all work together and we create impact. So it's been an amazing journey so far. Thank you. For sharing that, Oko. Um, just one thing. So during our time, there was nothing like COVID. So I mean, we were in the office. We got to interact with the members in the office. We had first-hand experience in certain things. I mean, what was your experience like working from home and all of that with the COVID? I mean, um, it was an experience. <laughs> That's what I'll say. It was an experience <laughs> because even working from home, expect. A call from Auntie Adria, oh, I want you to put something together for me. You do it. It doesn't feel like you were even home because every now and then you are in a meeting, you're writing a report, you are doing this. So sometimes even my mom will come and ask, why are you always in the room on this TV? What is happening? You understand? Because COVID brought its own challenges, but the office also adapted. We're organizing a lot of events online, engaging people all around the world. So it was an amazing. You wouldn't even feel there was COVID because we're engaging, even fighting within teams, putting things together. It was an experience. That's what I can say. It was an experience indeed. Thank you, Oko. Um, so just, just to round up on our conversation, we just want to share um, a few comments. Um, maybe an advice to our incoming cohort, what they, they should expect in this. Um, if you have one advice. Well, I, I just want to tell my um, new, our new cohort that they should just live and learn throughout their experience. They shouldn't put too much expectations on themselves because their staff is there, the rep, the deputy rep, and the entire staff, they are there to just help you. If you need something and you want to learn, feel free and ask. Ask the questions. Don't be scared to make mistakes and ask so you can learn and improve. So just live by the moment. Thank you. Thank you. And let me also just add to what Toko is saying, just a word of advice to our incoming cohort. I just want you to challenge yourself to do everything. Just, just don't have limitations on yourself or on the things, on the kind of things you can do. Even if you don't know how to do, you take it up and then you learn through the process. There are colleagues around who are willing to help in all of those things. And, and finally, I would also like to say that please build network in and out of the, the fellowship. The people around you, they are the people, they are the same people you move with wherever you go to. Build network in the fellowship. Outside the fellowship, you also have the, the opportunity to meet a lot of people through um, your outreaches, through meetings, through all of um, the meetings. Yes, try and build a network because there's a saying that your network determines your net worth. Yes. Thank you very much for your Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, Oko and Theodora. So please remember to build networks. And I think one thing that uh, Cohort 2 also came up with is that orange is, a orange is a lifestyle. So if orange is a lifestyle, please make sure that whatever you do is orange. Whatever you do is geared towards ensuring that somebody's potential is fulfilled ensuring that we are going, actually, ensuring that we are achieving our three zeros as UNFPA. And that way, orange becomes a lifestyle. Okay, so Jerusalem dancers, are you ready? Yeah. All right. You're not ready, you are ready. Okay, so let's see you. Come up stage. Are you coming or you're not coming? Hey. Oh, sorry. Sorry, oh. <laughs> uh, oh, all this is part of the style. Ah, uh, okay, I didn't know. Mm. Please, Jerusalem dancers.
Note. We want to say thank you so much. I'm going to let uh, the deputy rep just say a few words. Agnes, please don't sit. <laughs> just a few words so we can close and eat. Our food has been waiting as well. And there'll be music playing, so there'll be opportunity to dance. But I'll hand over to the deputy rep, Dr. Agnes Kayit Kantkore, to please say the closing remarks. In a Jerusalem mode. I know the evening has been a very, very exciting 
and very wonderful one. We are expecting to have our dinner while we are celebrating. But let me take this opportunity to once again thank and congratulate Koho Tsu for being with us, for all the contributions and the impact you made to UNFPA. Of course, Court 1 was the light. Court 2, you follow the footsteps, and I'm sure you start giving the advices to the Court 3. Uh, before thanking each and everyone for your time and your presence, allow me to recognize that our ABLE representative, who has been the engine, who is the leader, but also the young, among the young people. You could see his energy and passion about this fellowship program, which is really an innovative approach brought to this country office. He acknowledged everyone's contribution and everyone's participation, but also the work which has been done and forgot about himself. This is the good place to clap for him and acknowledge his leadership. <laughs> we want to sincerely thank you all for your time, for making it on a Sunday evening. It's not easy, but it was worth it. And appreciation to our able MC and coordinator of the young people. We have so many young people, either by age, which is just a number, and those young at hearts, just like me. So thank you so much, and thanks to the families, thanks to the friends, thank you for everyone who managed to make it and to have this beautiful evening. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, our Deputy Rep. And on that note also, I'd like to say thank you so much to everyone to making the time to be here, sitting patiently through the, the whole um, event. I want to especially thank the families, the members of the families. As Oko said, sometimes it's really late and still they were dedicated enough to live up to the expectations. And if the families didn't understand and give them the opportunity, it may not have happened. So families, thank you so much for al allowing your young people to excel at what they do. They have done it brilliantly and they have done it so well. UNFPA is proud of them. Let's give them a round of applause, a last round of applause. Okay, so we are done for the evening, but of course there's food on the left. Please note that you need to be wearing a mask before you go to your food, for your food. You need, please, COVID is not gone. We are supposed to be masked. Please remember that, especially with the Delta variant around. We are required to wear our mask before we go for our food. DJ, please give us some music while we leave. Thank you so much, everybody, and good night. Yes, uh, maybe the ladies, Mr. DJ, since our ladies are still here, maybe you give us some, some music. We enjoy you so much. And in order to ensure that we don't have too many people at the table, to ensure that we, ha we don't have too many people at the table, we will go in uh, a particular order. Is the Anybody we won't fight you. Mr. DJ, please. Uh, know. Yeah, wait. I'll be right beside you. Like the wall of Jericho. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know what's going on. Okay. Wanna kiss you. Wanna kiss you. Wanna kiss you, my baby boy. I'll be a soldier for you. I'm getting the time for food. You should know I got you, and you don't need to got me too. I'll be right beside you in anything that you do. If you ever need saving, I will be okay. Um.
Dr. Nakuna is okay. They are attending to him. In the meantime, we'll go according to tables um, so that we are not crowded over there. Okay. You guys can go first. This table, please. We'll go in this order and we'll snake around there. So table one, please go. Please take your food quickly so we don't spend too much time at the I'm looking for trouble. It's cause I know that I got you. One in my best, everybody. Oh, oh. And it's because of your kung fu.